Hi everybody and welcome to another piano review here at Miriam Pianos. My name is Stu Harrison and we're looking at Kawhi's CA79. It's a fairly new entry to their high-end home digital lineup, part of the CA series. Uh, it sits just under the CA99 and just above the CA59, which is literally just in the midst of hitting the market. Uh, it's a great piano. I've really loved getting to know it. Uh, we're enjoying having it here in the showroom. And today we're gonna be taking a look at its action. We're gonna be talking about its sound. Thank you so much for joining us for the video today. If it is the first time that you visit us here at Miriam Pianos on YouTube, we would really appreciate if you did subscribe. Without further ado, let's get started with this beautiful piano right away. All right, so we're in front of the CA79, and this instrument uses a very similar sound engine uh, to what is now also found on the Nova series as the NV5 and the NV10, as well as its big brother, the CA99. And at the core of this, or I shouldn't really say at the core of it, what I should say is that the, the featured centerpiece of this sound engine really is uh, a rendering, or as, or as more generically it might be referred to, a modeling engine. So this is an, uh, an unlimited amount of polyphony that you have when you're using the SKEX rendering sound engine. So this is a computer model that is based around the SKEX sample set, but you can use the SKEX sample set just as a sample set with normal harmonic imaging on this instrument if you select it. Uh, it's just a different patch, but on the SKEX rendering, this is a limitless uh, kind of computer-driven uh, sound reproduction, piano reproduction, and it's very, very interesting to play. It's particularly interesting to get in there and start working with all of the parameters that allow you to customize uh, this instrument. So I guess that's the first thing to know about the CA79 is this does give you access to that uh, limitless polyphony and the same SKEX rendering engine that's available on all of the other Novas. So uh, I guess one way to look at this is if the sound engine was the priority and you had the budget to be looking at any of those and you were mostly gonna be using this instrument with an external speaker system or headphones, the CA79 pretty much gets you there uh, for what, about a quarter or a fifth the price of the NV5. Big difference in action, big difference in cabinetry, obviously, uh, but the brains of the machine are there. So that's pretty cool. The CA79 and the 99 are going to be compared a lot, I would imagine, from people who are looking at that and going, okay, the 99 has the soundboard. Are there any other differences? What's the playing difference? Because we've had customers come in uh, and go both ways. We've had people who uh, thought that they were coming in to pick up the 99, had a chance to play the 79, didn't really feel that there was a big enough difference to go with the 99, and we've had the exact opposite happen, maybe even a little more so the other way, where people thought the 79 would cut it, and once they'd heard the 99, felt very, very differently. So just because you've got two instruments uh, that have uh, more or less the same guts, and it's the speaker system uh, that is the difference, um, they really are very different in terms of musically how they behave. Uh, you would expect a much more similar uh, overall experience, but of course, once you start mucking with or changing the way in which the sound arrives at your ear, all other, everything else uh, changes. The whole musical equation in your subconscious changes how the instrument is reacting to you. So uh, I was not expecting um, such a big difference in the playing experience between the 79 and the 99. I just wasn't. I, I thought the 99 would have a bit more of a, a bassiness to it because of just the, the sheer size of the, the diaphragmatic uh, surface that the 99 is using, the, the soundboard. Um, but it's, it's more than that. The highs are coming at you at a slightly different way. The, the mids are coming at you at a slightly different way. And so um, what I found was the 79 became a very satisfying playing experience, but I did wind up having to go in and uh, fine tune the factory settings a little bit before I got to a point where it felt like an equally good 
uh, playing experience to what the 99, whereas the 99, straight out of the box without mucking with it at all, I felt like I was there right away. But with a little bit of playing around with things like the voicing and the touch curve uh, and uh, the, the lid opening or how far it's simulating the piano lid, I got to a place where I was loving the CA-79. So that's a piece of feedback for people who are investigating this instrument and maybe are going to go and experience this in a store. Um, try and get to a store and call ahead and make sure that there's a specialist there who knows the instrument well enough that they might be able to spend five or ten minutes working with you on this instrument before you either, uh, well, before making the decision on whether this is something that your ear really enjoys or not. Um, I found it uh, by default to be a, a bit of a sharper sound than on the 99 and I, my ear usually prefers something that's, that's a bit warmer. Speaking of the speakers, uh, the CA-79 has uh, three sets of speakers, so six speakers in total. It's got two woofers uh, that are on the bottom, sort of producing most of your low frequencies, and then you've got two mids and two tweeters uh, that are across the top, bringing you t well, really lots and lots of clarity. And it's a total of 100 watts pushing out there, so a little less power than what you get out of the 99, which I believe clocks in at about 135 uh, watts. But in either case, ample power and lots and lots of uh, headroom to fill a very, very large space with sound without the need for any other reinforcement. Uh, I could even see this in a relatively small sanctuary or place of worship or a larger uh, classroom environment where the onboard speakers uh, that this comes with is plenty. Uh, there's just no need uh, for you to reinforce that with anything else. So uh, this is the, uh, I guess, the patch setting that I got to on the 79 that I was really enjoying. But there's so much more to this instrument than just its uh, kind of its highlighted SKEX rendering engine. Um, here, for example, is the non-rendering engine. So this is just your normal SKEX sample set. Back to the EX rendering. So it kind of sounds like all the edges are just rounded off a little bit more. There's just a little more nuance and a little more subtlety as you're uh, taking the instrument through its dynamic ranges. If you isolate just the sound up from the straight sample, it's probably going to be a little hard to actually tell a quality difference. Really those differences come out when you start to push the instrument in, in a really wide, um, uh, yeah, a, a variety of, of volume ranges and a variety of of kind of touches and approaches. That's where you, uh, you start to uh, witness, I guess, all of the extra detail that sometimes those computer models are, are able to deliver. In addition to the piano sounds that this has, there are tons of other instruments that are available uh, on the CA-79. And we're gonna do a segment at the end of the video, so please watch until the end of the video, where we're gonna look at the user interface that the 79 comes equipped with, because it's honestly probably one of the best thought out user interfaces and it's a computer or it's a rather it's a color touchscreen 
got to be like just absolutely one of the top in the whole industry uh, right now. Very easy to use, very intuitive, um, but still loaded with lots of complexity for people who want to dive a little bit deeper than just the surface. Uh, but in addition to all the acoustic piano sounds, this has a wide variety of electric piano sounds, um, uh, strings, uh, organs, you name it and it probably has at least a few examples here uh, and the quality Uh, the quality of all of the samples is extraordinarily good. Uh, I have yet to find one where I felt that it was really a, a poor example of what it was trying to represent. Um, it's also really cool how they've got these organized uh, kind of into genres almost. But anyway, uh, that's basically a quick discussion of the sound. Uh, the last thing I will mention for people who are used to uh, kind of Kawaii terminology like harmonic imaging and virtual technician, it's got that. It also has Bluetooth audio, it also has Bluetooth MIDI. Uh, and so to use this speaker system as a Bluetooth speaker is, is great, it sounds absolutely phenomenal. Uh, and the Bluetooth MIDI just makes it that much easier to connect apps uh, and to use this as like a composing tool if you've got a writing program like Sibelius or even if you're just using a DAW like, uh, I don't know, Ableton or Logic or Pro Tools or anything like that, this can sort of be your partner uh, in crime. Uh, so we're going to throw some specs up on the screen for you uh, and then we're going to move right along to action. So thank you very much for being with us. We'll be back in just a second. So the CA-79 uses uh, the Grand Feel 3 Action. Uh, this is, uh, for all intents and purposes, an update to the Grand Feel 2, uh, which is what you could find in the CA-98 and the CA-78. The Grand Feel 3 uh, is going to bring a couple of engineering updates that are going to be useful, uh, in, in my opinion, primarily to institutional and commercial users. Uh, the Grand Field 2 was an excellent action. I loved how the Grand Field 2 uh, felt. Uh, there was just a little bit more uh, dynamic resistance to the Grand Field 2, or at least that's, that's my impression, um, which I actually enjoyed. What the Grand Field 3 brings, though, uh, is a whole new uh, way in which the end of the key stick is attached or connecting with the cap stand. It's a totally different system of connect, uh, connection point there. Uh, Kawhi used to use some slip tape and a real brass cap stand. Uh, in some cases where the, we had very, very heavy users of these instruments, we're talking like two, three, four hours a day, five, six days a week, um, that slip tape actually had to be upgraded to some real felt, uh, you know, a la an acoustic piano, and then it was fine. The instrument worked, you know, as intended, but that slip tape uh, just wasn't built to, to deal with, with, you know, thousands of thousands of hours uh, of use. Uh, it w and what they found was that the digital pianos that they were putting the Grand Field 2 into were so good that people were using it more like an acoustic piano, not just obviously as a piano, but uh, the use cases where an acoustic piano would normally have been teaching studios, uh, you know, churches, um, uh, even universities. So the Grand Field 3 updates that. It's got a triple sensor, so the MIDI output is very, very accurate. Uh, it's also got uh, escapement or let off, which is uh, basically it simulates that little uh, kind of hiccup about two thirds of the way down, which uh, comes from uh, that part of an acoustic piano where the jack sort of just slips right off the knuckle of the hammer. So it's got that. Um, the other thing it's got uh, is a, a nice, uh, fairly subtle uh, ebony texture on the black keys, and then um, a matte finish on the white keys. It's got a micro texture, so it actually is still able to absorb a small amount of moisture, small amount of hand oils, 
uh, so that it doesn't become really super uh, slippery or sticky. It just kind of keeps this uh, nice semi uh, grippy feel to it regardless of the humidity level uh, you're in, um, uh, which, is, which is great. Um, the thing I love about the actions, generally speaking, that go into these Kawhi CA series is just how uh, robust the construction is overall, uh, because I don't often talk about this, but I will point it out, uh, is that this key stick, and when I say key stick, I'm talking about the, you know, the length of the whole key, is exactly the same as the acoustic key sticks that Kawhi puts in their upright pianos. Uh, the front pin uh, on, the, uh, on this action is exactly the same as what goes into the acoustic pianos. The, uh, the felt pads underneath the front of the keys, the balance rails, everything is constructed right up until the point where you get um, to the mechanism, uh, more or less as though it were an acoustic piano, um, which only makes every part of the playing experience feel that much more authentic. So that's the Grand Feel 3, that's what you're getting in the CA79. Um, we're going to put a few specs up there about the action and then we're going to move on to our third section where we're going to exclusively take a peek at this really quite phenomenal uh, touchscreen user interface control system. Thanks so much. So the home screen menu really shows you, uh, it, it takes you into a piano mode because of course I think that's what Kawhi is assuming is going to be the primary use. Uh, and you get a nice kind of swipeable menu from left to right showing the different uh, options for the acoustics. And you've even got some really nice animation effects as you scroll from one to the other. Uh, that's a nice job and it's a big improvement over uh, what it was before. The other thing you're going to notice is some of the most uh, commonly used features rather than being buried in menus or alternate screens, basically they have shortcut keys to those, such as the metronome function. And so you have a visual of the metronome happening up top, which is great. You also have the option of uh, changing um, uh, the tempo, the time signature, as well as the volume uh, and the tempo up there. And then an easy, uh, obvious X to get out of that. We can also switch it to rhythm. And you can turn it off very nice and easily. Uh, the next menu we're going to explore um, is if you press the SKEX rendering to get into the submenu of the piano itself, now you get into the piano variation. So we have jazz, clean, concert. So these are basically uh, preset uh, types or rendering types. Um, and then you have, uh, and these are uh, rendering type. I believe what these are are more or less um, different combinations of the 22 virtual technician presets, I think. I have yet to hear back from Kawhi on whether that's, that's more or less what that rendering type in the piano variation is. Uh, but I believe that's how it is. And then to really get into the nuts and bolts um, of all of the uh, settings that you can have, you are going to click Virtual Technician. And that brings up our ability to edit the touch curve, uh, the voicing, resonant depth, damper noise, fallback noise, hammer noise, hammer delay, Top board, decay, release time, the minimum touch, stretch tuning, key volume, half pedal adjust, soft pedal adjust. So quite a few options and parameters in there to play with. Uh, you'll also notice that you see a record button. I love that they put this here. Uh, it's very easy to access and the use of the record function is very intuitive. So if we go record, then it's on recording standby. As soon as I start to play, it's going to work. And then we press record to wrap up. Do I want to just hear it back? 
Sure, let's just hear it back. Okay, I liked it, and now we can save it. Test. And now that's saved. And we'd access that by going to the music function, and we'd be able to get our uh, user saved uh, songs within the music. So we're on piano mode right now, that's what we've been looking at. Now if we go over to sounds, we're going to get a whole other interface. And this is divided into different categories, which is really cool. So this is kind of by genre up top, so this is everything you might uh, come across uh, or might want to play in a pop setting, in a jazz setting, classic setting, recommended, I don't know who's recommending it, but sure, recommended, recently played, I find that to be a really handy feature, and then all the sounds, and when you're on all sounds, and you only get this on all sounds, you get these icons down the left side, which show you what instrument category you're on. So this is the piano, then we've got electric piano, we've got organ, uh, pipe organ, um, harpsichord, uh, those like the mallet instruments, uh, string instruments, choral, pads, bass, and guitar. So really nice, uh, you know, intuitive navigation uh, of those options. If we go over to music, that's where we can see uh, our, our test piece. But then we can also access the USB music player. We can uh, look it up by composer. So let's say we want some Bach. And this is all the preloaded music that's on here from Bach. Like hours and hours of music. So that might be an interesting way to explore some new music. It's loaded with uh, well over a dozen different lesson books. Uh, and then there's the sound demo. And there, you can see that there's a little heart there next to quite a few of these things. So anytime you find something that's a favorite, you can mark it with uh, that little favorite icon. And then the final screen uh, is the menu screen. And this is where you've uh, got the ability to set some controls, EQ controls and other sort of spatial controls for both the speaker system as well as the headphone system. So you've got tone control, flat, the wall EQ, uh, which allows you to uh, more or less tweak the speaker settings uh, depending on how close you have it to the wall uh, or what type of flooring it's setting on. Low volume balance, uh, speaker volume, and then spatial headphone sound. Headphone type, so open back, semi open, open, closed, inner ear. This is intense stuff and this is all by Onkyo by the way. Uh, headphone volume and then line in volume. Four hands mode, you've got the Bluetooth uh, settings. We already mentioned earlier that it had, does both uh, Bluetooth MIDI and Bluetooth audio. We've got your MIDI settings, play MIDI channel, so actually quite intense in terms of the level of detail you have over the MIDI. Uh, and then you've got uh, system settings as well, like the LCD brightness, display scale, the startup screen. So. That's kind of a deep dive into uh, the control panel on the CA99. Like I said, on its own, uh, really quite the centerpiece. I think they've done an exceptional job of taking uh, their experience with the first generation as well as feedback from the user community and really uh, executed well on a fantastic user uh, interface. I don't think it's a stretch for me to say that this is probably the best designed user interface I have ever experienced on a digital piano in my life. Uh, it's so easy to use. 
uh, and manages uh, to uh, make it a, a fun experience to navigate. So that is our first look at the CA79, uh, a digital piano with ample uh, you know, capability to satisfy piano players uh, of, of literally all levels. Uh, this is going to work for even advanced players where either footprint, you know, otherwise the space is an issue, uh, or this is a second instrument, or uh, you know, noise management is just a really, really critical thing. It's going to be a wonderfully satisfying piano for hobbyists who are looking for something uh, that just uh, has a richer sound than maybe what they're currently using on the digital piano that they may be upgrading from. Uh, it's gonna work really well for educators. Uh, it is loaded uh, with all of the most popular method books. Uh, we didn't really uh, mention that too much, uh, but you can access Alfred's, uh, I, 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 I'm blanking right now, but you can get onto the website and see how many different um, learning methods are pre-baked into the instrument so you can use it as a companion piece. So lots to like here. Please get to a dealership if you can. And once again, thank you for watching. This has been Miriam Pianos. My name is Stu Harrison. And please hit that subscribe button if you have not already. We will see you back for another video shortly. Yeah,